Welcome to the TCS Plus show. My name is Yaliwa Soko and I'll be your host today. And joining me in studio is Frank Sherlock. And Frank is the VP International of Coal Miner. Uh, Frank, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Coal Miner, please. Well, good day, Yaliwa. Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, so Coal Miner, uh, people often ask me, you know, what do Coal Miner do? And you say, hey, we're a conversation analytics company, which really is pretty meaningless. What we really are is a data company. Uh, what we do is all of the interactions that take place between organizations and their consumers or customers, whether they be on social or web chat or email or audio, that they're, they're, they're just data. The problem is that it's unstructured data. Um, what we do basically is turn that unstructured data into structured data and provide that data analysis back to our clients mm -hmm. in a way that that data is suddenly actionable and insightful. So that's really what we do. We're, we're, we're a data company that take data in consumer interactions to help our, our customers improve their business. Mm -hmm. And so, um, obviously, that comes with a lot of responsibility, right, as um, a company that manages data and analyzes data, right? So how do you kind of ensure that um, the data is protected, um, looking at maybe a PII aspect of it? Yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a great question because, obviously, well, these interactions could, could contain anything from from card information, yes. you know, payment information, to to uh, personal identifiable information. Uh, as a glo as a global company, you know we are bound by by data protection regulations. You know things like uh, the uh, health protection regulations in the in the United States, different U.S. data regulations, GDPR in the EU, uh, Poppy in yes. South Africa other regulations in Australia. And it, it's really important that you, that we have as a data processor, because that's really what our role is as a data processor. We don't own the data. We're not the, mm -hmm. we're not the data owner, but we are a processor of data, that we process that data in accordance with all of the regulatory requirements uh, in whatever region that we operate. So a couple of things. Uh, we we are fully ISO 27001 certified and we have a whole host of policies and processes right the way through from how we train our staff in the importance of, of, of information security and data protection through to the technical um, <clears throat> aspects of, of how we protect data and encryption at rest and everything else. Um, we also... As we take any interaction into into our cloud service, we we redact uh, information. So we have uh, PCI payment card industry mm -hmm. redaction, where where we see two two or more consecutive numbers. We redact uh, all of the numbers from both the audio copy that we have and from the transcripts that we produce from audio, and we have. Um, AI-driven PII, so where we see names, addresses, any health information, etc. So we redact all of that. So we don't we don't hold PII and payment card information within our systems. So it's a it's a huge topic, Ilawe, the whole issue of data protection. But with four hundred and fifty customers globally across many verticals, such as you know, finance, insurance, uh, energy, telecoms, you know, we are well versed in, in the obligations and we take them really seriously in terms of how we manage and protect consumer data. Thank you so much for that, Frank. And um, you've mentioned AI, but before I get to that, because it looks like AI is now becoming yeah. a big part of our daily lives. But before I get to that, um, maybe mm -hmm. it also looks like you do a lot of compliance, Right. But uh, besides the yeah. compliance, what are some of the challenges uh, that you face in collecting and, and analyzing data? So, so in terms of collecting and analyzing data, um, there, there is a – getting the data from web chats, email systems, uh, call recording systems, uh, from, from, from telecoms networks, social media – 
it, the, the actual technicalities of getting of getting the data are, aren't particularly challenging. There's always going to be some bumps in the road. There's always going to be some variances. But actually receiving the data in so we can analyze it is generally not not the biggest challenge for us. One of one of the one of the obstacles that that, that, that we see though is let's say you and I are on a call and we're you know I'm making a complaint about it. Let, let's say it's a delivery or something. Yeah, and you as the agent say back to me, don't worry, Mr. Sherlock, uh, that will be, uh, we, we've delivered a new, a, a, a new package to you, it'll be with you in 24 hours. Now, I might leave that call happy. You know, my problem's been resolved and I'm going to, but, but I don't get the parcel in 24 hours and the agent didn't reinitiate a, another delivery. So it's the ability to combine data with with what happened on the call, with what was the outcome, and 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 being able to to consolidate other other data sources that tell the true picture of the story, not just what happened on the call. So so that, that that's one of the the areas that we work really hard on in terms of you know we have a um, we use open uh, application programming interfaces APIs. So we can take data from CRM systems or other systems and enhance the data that we had when the call took place with that data. And sometimes you know, the challenges may be around getting them external data sources consolidated and into and into a platform such as ours. But, but yeah, you know, the, the technicalities. You know, I think with, with the advent of, of of open open APIs, with the advent of cloud, uh, I think a lot of the challenges that we've seen historically are a lot more reduced these days. So, um, thank you so much, Frank, uh, for that answer. So, I heard you talking about AI and um, its importance in your collection of data. But before we get back to that. I'd like to know what are some of the challenges, apart from compliance, of course, that um, companies face in analyzing and collecting data? So I think that the challenges of, of collecting data are pretty much um, resolvable or resolved. You know, that with the advent of open APIs and, and cloud, the ability to extract audio, uh, metadata, uh, web chat, emails etc from various external systems and bring all that together in in, in one place uh whilst it's ne- it, it, it's never always easy it's certainly Absolutely. resolvable so, so so the collection of data is is i think pretty uh, pretty mature these days i think when it comes to the analysis of data it from from my perspective what happened on the call versus what happened post the call and the data that exists to say what happened post the call. An example would be if we were, um, you know, I was complaining about a delivery and you were to say, don't worry, Mr. Sherlock, we'll, we'll, we'll resend that delivery. You'll have it in 24 hours. So I, I think, oh, okay, my problem resolved. 24 hours passes. I don't get my delivery. I'm an unhappy customer again. And the external, the data that, the, the that relates to the action that the agent took isn't part of the initial analysis that we did on the call to say, hey, you know, the problem was resolved. So it's the ability to to be able to combine data sources from disparate systems to actually get a truly holistic view of the customer journey and the customer outcome, which I still think can be challenging from time to time. You know, we've we've gone a long way down within our our solution to open up uh, APIs to external systems like CRM systems or point of sale systems, etc. So we can add in data from from these external systems to get that truly holistic picture. Uh, but that's still you know that probably is to me one of the one of the, you know, the the biggest challenges is making sure that that data is 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 consolidated and holistic. Absolutely. So um, just going back to my question, it's quite interesting that you're using AI, uh, maybe just for the sake of our listeners and our audience. Would you just explain a little bit in why AI is important for collecting and analyzing data, as well as um, 
you mentioned how, how you use it within your organization and how it will actually help improve um, their businesses. Yeah, so so we've been doing we've been doing uh, conversation analytics for for twenty years. So I, I think we were doing um, machine learning before the term was was actually invented. Um, yeah. So when it comes to to you know human conversations, no matter what the channel, that that they are inherently complex. And in order to, to be able to sort out the, the, the relevant detail of, of a conversation, for example, you know, when you express uh, a sentiment such as dissatisfaction, that you may have 250 different ways of, of saying that you're not happy. It could be anything from saying I'm not happy to, to a profanity. When it comes to having, um, uh, different call drivers and different products. There's a huge amount of, of data that needs to be understood to get to the relevant data. So we use a, we use a AI in a, in a product that we have called uh, Illuminate, which, which allows a, 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 an analysis to take place. Um, when people talk about, about product A, they are also talking about these other things that they it's it's uh they don't understand instructions they they it's hard to set up uh it doesn't work properly and so it's using ai to actually tell you what what the context is around a particular topic so we we do that uh, as part of our our normal day-to-day -day business um so yeah, we've been a. I would like to say we were a pioneer of machine learning, and we've we and we we've been using AI for for several years within the product. You mentioned earlier, Yulawe, about about redaction. We use we use AI to to do redaction. You know, because because there's many different aspects to things like PII. You know, that 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 that, that can be captured using AI and brought together and say right. Here in this conversation was the was the PII. This is the, the, the he, this is these are the things that we need to redact. Absolutely, does that make absolutely, sense? it does make sense. A lot of sense. So um, obviously, data is a huge part of a lot of businesses, right? So maybe mm -hmm. uh, hearing from you, Frank, what are some of the best practices for companies that are looking into making uh, data driven uh, decisions? Uh, I, I guess I guess that we should first of all think about about that from from a perspective of of I think you need to have a data driven culture first of all yeah I think it's really important that the you know I think I've already described I think the obstacles in in, in analyzing data are, are not necessarily technical I do think that there are there are some some cultural um uh, barriers, perhaps, that need to be. So, and I, I think it starts at the top. You know, I think top managers need to set the expectations that decisions that are made for the business need to be data driven, and set that example in the day to day practice and how they, you know, have meetings and say, right, what data are we going to discuss in the meetings, etc. They need to choose their metrics really carefully. You know, there's lots of things you can measure in data, but, but choose the metrics that matter most to the business, to the use case, to the strategy, and track the quality of, of those, of those uh, measures over time, because things will change. People will change. Products will change. Processes will change. Uh, and then finally, I think one of the most important things is, to, is perhaps to think about the boundary between the operations and the data science people within mm -hmm. organizations. One of the best practices I've seen is, is where organizations second the data scientist into the operation for a while. So, 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 so they are familiar with, with the operational aspect of the data that they are, they are using uh, within, the, within the data science group. So they'd be sort of, I guess, three things, you know, it, it, but, but it's not, technical it's cultural in terms of data absolutely and then um obviously 
employee experience is very important. So how important is uh, employee experience and um, CX and obviously the analysis and interaction of uh, data? Wow, that's a, that, 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 that's probably a topic for a, for, for, for a three hour podcast, <laughs> that one. But, 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 but let me try and, let me try and summarize it. I think it's, okay. it, it, it's proven. Uh, there's many, many papers and journals been written on this subject that the, a positive customer experience leads to better outcomes for the business. The link sometimes though that people, people don't necessarily relate to is the part the employee plays in delivering that customer experience. Yeah. Highly effective and highly engaged employees will deliver a better customer experience. With all things being equal, uh, the engaged employee delivers a better experience than the perhaps disengaged or, or neutral employee. So how can you use data to help the employee Yes. Do a better job. Feel better about themselves. And we do this. We do this regularly with, with, with all of our customers. You, you may start off your LARE with with uh, an organisation that, 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 from a learning and development perspective, uh, for the for the the people who are dealing with the consumers, they may look at two three percent of their interactions and and manually assess them. Yeah, and say, hey, you know, you're good on this, but. Would you want to be scored on two or three percent of your work? Yeah, you, 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 you'd, you'd want your whole your whole universe of work. And what what analytics allows you to do is to look at things holistically, to look at all of those calls and get really targeted and focused in, in what the what the development needs may be of the agent. For example, I say, "Hey, Frank, you know, you're, you're, you you show great empathy when there's dissatisfaction." Uh, you, you you strike up great rapport with your, with your customers, but occasionally you tend to talk a little bit fast. Could you just slow down your delivery a bit? And, and you know that human beings are just you know we respond very positively where we feel we're being conceived, we're being uh, treated consistently, fairly, objectively, and holistically, to, uh, and we are getting targeted and focused training i.e the company is investing in us as a, as a person we'll respond to that we'll be more motivated and we will deliver better customer experiences as a, as a result so so that's we spend a lot of time with our clients ensuring that the data that that, that is within these conversations isn't just measured from the the consumer side but it's also used to help the the agent or advisor to to perform better. Absolutely, and um, I, and also now it looks like AI still plays a very big role, right? Because I've seen um, Chat GPT is making waves everywhere. So maybe would you want to just speak a little bit about how important these technologies are? Yeah, I mean, as a as a as a data company, you know, we uh, just as a company in general. You know, my, my core miner, we, we, we innovate on a regular basis. For example, we bring out probably 10 new releases of our software a year. So we're constantly, we're, we're constantly innovating. We're constantly tracking technological changes, but, but we won't just do it for doing its sake. So if you think about, about chat GPT, it's about ensuring that, that in, in including that technology within our technology stack, we're doing it in a way that is beneficial for our customers, our clients, um, and their end customers. So we have some some exciting developments to I can't talk about them on the on this call uh, later this year in relation to to okay. where we're doing chat. But but we're not going to take a blanket approach. I think you know what we see in the marketplace is there's a lot of noise. Around around things like Chat GPT, it's almost like it's magic. Hey, it's magic! You don't need to have, <laughs> some, you know, you don't, do you, my don't own way too. Things, you don't need to have things like scalability and security and resilience. Uh, so so it's about it's about doing it in a in a structured and ethical manner that brings 
benefits to to our clients. So we're, we're doing it. Uh, you know, one of the things that we did uh, uh, last year was we looked at if you think about audio, and you know, you and I having this conversation was being transcribed and then analysed. The transcription is really important. The transcription accuracy. So you know, we partner with with, with Microsoft. You know, Microsoft had a uh, have a, a huge amount of training, I guess, that they can have on their various language models because you know they're Microsoft and they you know people record Teams calls, etc. So we put uh, cognitive uh, speech to text recognition from Microsoft into into our product, which allowed us to to get higher levels of accuracy, which allowed us to get you know greater language coverage. Uh, but we didn't we didn't rush that decision we did it in a way that was going to be beneficial to our customers our business and the end customers so it's about constant innovation and it's about doing the right thing at the right time for us when it comes to chat gpt i think i like the term constant innovation i I mean um technology is always evolving so we need to keep up um maybe let's talk about maybe the next big action and maybe real time right so we're talking about maybe enterprise-wide um, analytics and in real time. How how does this tie into what you're doing? So, so I think real time ties in really well to, the, to one of the previous questions about the employee uh, and employee experience. Don't just think about about providing really targeted and focused training, if you like, post po- post call or post interaction. How can you, mm-hmm. you know? Agents these days are dealing with, 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 you know, complex calls because by its very nature, you know, we've seen the market shift in digital transformation and self-service. When calls break out into the human-assisted channel, they are going to be inherently complex by nature. They, they just are because of, because people have probably tried to do stuff on the website or the mobile app or, or you know, the IVR or whatever. They break out into the human channel. Complex call. So how can you guide the agent in the moment, in the call, to help them deliver a better outcome? So you know, an example would be um, over here in the UK, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of regulations around vulnerable customers, and they could be vulnerable from a financial perspective, uh, they could be a health perspective, or it could be they could be uh, a life event, or it could be they could be digitally vulnerable. They they just don't have the, the 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 means to access digital channels, and so there's obligations around that. Now, when, when an agent deals with vulnerable customers, that because let's say let's say you and me are having a conversation, and uh, and you're trying to sell me something, you know, uh, 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 as the agent, you're focused on on, on the sale, you're focused on on the outcome. You may miss the pointer when it says, "How are you today, Frank?" Well, you know, I've I'm, I'm, I'm just got out of hospital, but, but but I'm well, thank you. You may miss the fact I've just got out of hospital as a trigger of of, of vulnerability. So, but if you can in real time detect that trigger and then pop up onto the agent's screen, you know, vulnerability detected. Uh, please, pl- please signpost the, the you know the appropriate next action. If you can pop up the onto the agent's screen using API, what they should do in relation to that vulnerability. You're helping the agent to navigate the call as it's actually happening, uh, and it's going to be a much more efficient call, and the agent's going to feel that the, co- that the company have invested in tools and techniques. So I see I'm a real fan, you know, way of, of, of real-time. I think real-time analytics is is – is going to grow significantly uh, in the next two years. We've been doing it for about for about four or five years uh, within Core Miner, but but at the end of the day, when digital transformation is done, when 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 post call analytics is is more pervasive, the the next big thing is going to be real time uh, analytics, and it really will help to just provide that coaching and guidance to to an agent when a call has taken place without without human intervention. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, you've, you've touched a little bit on the, the channels that are used, right? 
uh, obviously with mm-hmm. multiple channels it's 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 very important to consider the user um the customer experience and the customer yeah. journey yes so um Seriously. i'd like to hear a little Seriously. bit more about how important it is to consider uh, the customer journey okay so 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 let me let me just just reflect back on on, on something i said a few minutes ago now i spoke about yes. about digital transformation you know the pandemic i think necessitated uh, a drive to to you know people went at the you know, contact centers were closing people went in the offices it was hard to get hybrid working uh home at home working up up and running so there was a push to digital transformation to self service to asynchronous non human assisted channels yeah and that was necessary however not all of them are are are, are are optimal not all of them are great and and now we we've, we've we've got a sense of normality now how how can you use the data it it, it let, people break out into human conversation when when they can't do something self service or they've not got the cognitive skills to 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 use the self service channels or they've not got the means or access to use the self service channels when a call breaks out into a self service channel you into human channel sorry generally speaking what we find within the first 30 seconds of, of that conversation whether it be web chat or or or, or um or audio the consumer will will express that I was trying to pay my bill on the mobile app. I was trying to do a balance transfer. I was trying to arrange a reschedule a delivery. The the, the call driver, the reason for for why that that journey ended within a human assisted channel will be will will be stated. If you can gather that information at scale and data, and say, listen, you know, we have a problem with our self service for um for meter reading or bill payment you can go back use the data to go back and fix the self service channel and one of the wonderful things that that that, that we have is the is the capability to not just have omni channel but to have all of that together and, and and have a customer journey and truly understand you know what it, what it was within the self service channel that didn't work that led to a that led to a human assisted breakout so number 1 it's important that you're able to analyze across all channels number 2 it's important that you're able to bring them channels together to 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 map that customer journey and number 3 it's important that you get the data to go back and feed forward into the self service channels to correct them if they're breaking down that's correct actually um I'm a culprit I think I whenever I see self service and there's okay do you want to speak to an agent I automatically go to speak to an agent I feel like it's more effective and you know I think more comforting to an extent because I'm speaking to another human mm-hmm. I feel like maybe self self service is cheating me a little bit but th- that's just me No but no I think, I, yeah, I, I, but, that's, but that's that's important you allow it because because cuz cuz that's your that's your preference yeah you no know, and another point of data is to be able to capture and then honor customer preferences yeah you know mm-hmm. if you prefer a a human assisted channel yeah that that why send you an email about about is you no know, the exactly. issue or your account why doesn't someone call you so you capture that you capture and honor customer preferences and you know within within um phone conversations for example You no know, maybe the organization should be saying to you so you allow me what 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 is your preference would you prefer us to contact you by email or when you say no 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 I I prefer you just to talk to me that then becomes a Absolutely. preference and that preference can be honored but I, I I personally would always try to do stuff without talking to 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 to, to people but, but that's my <laughs> you know, my preference is that is that's your preference to use the, the the one thing I don't like to do is to use web chat because I find the asynchronous nature of web chat a little bit frustrating that 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 the you you know you say the the agent might say hello it's frank here uh, how can i help you and you say well i've got a problem with my broadband 
and it's quiet for 60 seconds and you and you, you, you it, it, i find that frustrating yeah so web chat <laughs> because the agent is looking for the answer on the spreadsheet <laughs> Uh, they haven't got real time. They haven't got real time conversion, of course. Yeah, of giving them the answer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, just looking at that, how how do I see um, obviously this data interactions uh, combined with other data sources that could maybe help um, you know large organization data scientist teams? Just how do I see that? So, so we, we do. We, we have a lot of large enterprises of our customers across multiple verticals. One thing about data scientists is, is they they love structured and tagged data. Yeah, you know? and, and these interactions, this conversation between you and I, for example, has touched on many, many different topics. It's not just. Hey, you know what, what, it, what, what was the purpose of the call? It was a podcast. Was the call successful? Yes, we've talked about lots and lots of other things. Yeah. So when you're able to to to, to provide a data science team with the data from these interactions that may contain information on on product intelligence, brand intelligence, uh, competitors. Uh, it, there may be stuff there around around efficiency, first call resolution, compliance. When you're able to, to to give them all of that data, and they combine that with other data sources, with their predictive analysis uh, engines, with their point of sale systems, with with CRM data, it's it provides a really rich source of data that is otherwise not available to them. And what we see in our in our customers that the data scientists love to get the data from these interactions because it's so rich and it's so informative. We do a lot of work with with data science teams. Five years ago, you know, we were very much, I guess, our our typical buyer or typical customer was within a contact center operations area. The shift I've seen in the last five years. To, to to data science and data science teams being part of our key customer base has been huge. So um, no doubt in my mind, you'll have a, that, that, that data scientists, the data from conversations is hugely useful to data science teams. Thank you so much, Frank. This has been a very, very um, insightful discussion. And maybe is there anything that you'd like um our audience and listeners out there to to get to know or is there yeah is there anything that you'd like to announce to them how they would reach um you and call mine now or any other things like that so 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 i i guess be, 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 before i do that let me tell you a little practical story about about data yes please and, and, i like stories this, <laughs> this affected me personally so, so and it just will, will, will perhaps enforce how you can think about this so a few weeks ago, my car insurance was due for renewal. Now, now with car, with car insurance in the UK, you have to be given a month before it's due to be renewed. You have to be given the new premium, the, the new price, the new premium, and what the old price was. It, it's a legal obligation. So, so I get this this this, this uh, email. But wow, my, my, my insurance has gone up £150. I've had no accidents. I haven't changed my car. I haven't changed my address. Well, that's a, that's a lot. I don't really want to change my... I don't want the hassle. I don't want to change my car insurance. But I think, you know what? I'll ring them up and see if I can get you know a slightly better deal. So I ring the car insurance company and the guy, the, the really nice guy answers. And uh, he asked me what the purpose of the call was. I said, well, I've just got this renewal. And... Um, it's expensive. And he said, do you mind if I ask how, how much it is? And I said, well, and I, give him, I give him the price. You know what his response was? I don't blame you for leaving no. us. Now, now, what he should have done, what the training said was, does, does that the, the competitor policy include uh, no claims discount protection? Does it include free legal cover? Does it include windscreen cover? Should, have I thought about combining my home and car insurance? So, so when you think about this happening at scale, you can say you, you, you and using data, 
that person probably does that all of the time. There's probably a gap in the training. With analy- Absolutely. With analytics, you can see this. You can get to it and say, hey, you know, that, that this is how you can do a better a better cross-sell, upsell, you know, get some competitive intelligence on pricing, get some intelligence on brand. Uh, but, yeah, it was uh, – it wasn't one of my customers, by the way. So otherwise, you know, we'd have, that, that wouldn't have happened. In terms of getting some uh, additional Absolutely. data, from, uh, <laughs> in terms of getting some additional data on CoreMiner, please visit CoreMiner.com. Uh, within CoreMiner.com, you will find a tab to the Learning Center. The Learning Center can, uh, has a vast array of various assets, you know, white papers, ebooks, case studies. Uh, that people can feel free to download. Um, and there's also, you know, a contact us or ask for a demo. Um, so please, you know, I'd ask the audience if, they, if they're interested in finding out more, visit callminer.com and take it from there. Thank you so much, Frank. And um, you have been watching TCS Plus. My name is Yeliwa Soko and I've been your host today. And our guest is Frank Sherlock, VP International at Callminer. Thank you so much, Frank, once again for joining me in studio. Thank you, Leo. You're welcome.